Welcome back, no time to chat. Let's talk about bivariate visualizations. So here we are back in the familiar Jamovi. Last time we talked about visualizing univariate distributions. Now we're going to talk about visualizing bivariate distributions. So again, to get to this point, we have loaded in our data set, which you can do here by opening the data set or click it on recent if you recently read in the data set. And then you can go to the analysis tab and then go under Glenn mod and then choose flex plot and it'll bring you to this area where you can visualize things. So now let's say we want to look at really the primary outcome of interest, which is weight loss. And we want to see the relationship between therapy type and weight loss. Which of the two therapies was more effective? And so look at that. So it seems to be that behaviorists are more effective at weight loss. So they have more weight loss in the behaviorist group and then the cognitive have less weight loss. So let's go ahead and take a minute to see what this means. So by default, if actually if you look over here, the center and spread for the data by default, it chooses median and the quartiles, which I'll talk about what those means and mean in a minute. And then we have the mean and the standard errors and then mean and standard deviations. And so I'm gonna start with median and the quartiles. So what that tells you is this right here is the median. So in the behaviorist group, the median is approximately, oh, I don't know, so that's five, maybe eight. Eight pounds lost in the behaviorist group, whereas in the cognitive group, we've got on average, or not on average, on median, five pounds lost. And then the upper whisker is what this is sometimes called or the upper limit, that is the 75th percentile. And so the person who scored 75th percentile, they would have a weight loss value of about 13-ish. And then this right here is the 25th percentile. So somebody, the people who are at the 25th percentile lost, I don't know, four and a half pounds-ish. And likewise for the cognitive group, the 75th percentile is maybe I don't know, seven, and then the 25th percentile is zero. So that gives you an idea of the distributions and notice that the raw data are actually displayed there and they have been jittered, just like we talked about before. And another couple things we could do, we can change the transparency. And so let's say we think the messiness, or it's a little too messy, so we might change the transparency to 25% and it makes it a little more clear what the median and the interquartile ranges are and that sort of thing. So that's looking pretty good. We could also change it to mean plus standard error. So what is a standard error? Long story short, we're gonna talk about this uh, in the estimate section. A standard error is roughly translated to your degree of confidence about what the mean value is. So right here, we could very, very, very loosely translate it say we are approximately 95% confident that the mean falls between, I don't know, let's say that's uh, seven and a half, plus or minus whatever that is. So we are 95% confident the mean is, the actual mean is somewhere around here. And we are 95% confident that the actual mean for the cognitive group is somewhere around here. A-okay. And then as far as the standard deviation, so again, we will talk about this later, but standard deviation gives you an estimate of the variability in the data. So this is the mean, and on average, we deviate from the mean by about this much, okay? So in review, this says, here's how confident we are what the actual mean value is. Here's how much variability there is in the raw data. So that is a uh, dot plot, a median dot plot, and a mean dot plot in this case. Uh, with jitter data, we're gonna now, I'm going to now show you how to do a scatter plot. So as you know, uh, if you have a categorical predictor, it's going to do this sort of plot. But if we instead include a numeric predictor, so in this case, health, it's going to show us a scatter plot. All right, so this is our scatter plot, and by default, it shows us a lowest line, and it's a curvilinear relationship, so we know we probably shouldn't do a linear function, LM, which stands for linear model, but just to show you what it might look like, see, there you go. That would be misleading if you did that. So instead, we're gonna go to lowest, and so that shows us that there is a curvilinear relationship with health, between health and weight loss. 
So as you increase in your health rating, weight loss also increases up to a point. And then you get to a point about the middle of health or the median of health. And as you increase your health, your weight loss actually goes down. So you actually start gaining weight. Now let's take a minute and think about what that actually means. Maybe what this means is that those who are health nuts, they've already lost their weight. They don't need to lose any more weight. In fact, they might need to gain a little bit of weight. So they spend this time maybe developing muscle. So they start gaining weight. So that's an interesting insight that we can glean for our, from our data that we would have missed had we not visualized it first. Y'all seeing the benefit of visualization? Awesome. Now let's go ahead and look at one more categorical relationship. So let's look at rewards. So these people were rewarded for their weight loss and under the rewards condition, they are higher. So those who are rewarded, those who are given some sort of an incentive for losing weight, they lose more weight than those who are not given an incentive. And that's mean and standard deviation. Let's go ahead and look at median and the quartiles. And hey, look at that. Things are looking great. Okay, and then, so that was rewards. Now let's go ahead and look at, let's see what would be another interesting relationship. So let's go ahead and look at the relationship between muscle gain and weight loss. And just to show you some of these other options, I'm going to go ahead and ignore the confidence bands. So the confident, you remember how before, you remember how before I said the standard error shows you approximately how confident we are in the mean value? Well, the uh, blah, 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 blah. the confidence bands and scatter plot are very similar. So they show you how confident we are in the regression line ish. And so there's some curvilinearity here. There's some bendiness to the line. So as you gain more muscle, your weight loss understandably decreases. That actually makes sense. But for lower values of muscle gain, there is actually no relationship between weight loss and muscle gain. Let's go ahead and look at a straight line just for fun. And it's approximately, it's, it's a little negative relationship between the two, which makes sense. The more you exercise, the more muscle you gain, the more weight you lose, but it's not a very strong relationship, which makes sense because as you gain muscle, you also gain weight. So. Uh, so that is a second relationship. So now, in just like five minutes, you now know how to do scatter plots in Jamovi. Isn't that cool? We'll see you next time.